Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to give it a few minutes. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Just a few minutes. Okay, here we go. You are connecting me. All right, looks like we're getting ready to go now. Thank you, Father. Simply Allison, you all got to get that album. Simply Allison, God bless you. You got to get that album. It's prophetic and it'll help you. Yes, I do. Huh. All right. Hmm. Okay. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. God is so good. He's worthy of all praises. Thank God for you, Tamiko. Love you. So glad to see you here on live tonight. Uh, so glad to see you, daughter Allison. God bless you. Love you. The prophet of the most high God is just an awesome place to be. God is so good and he's worthy of praises. I'm not going to be long. This is just a 15 to 20 minute teaching to help encourage you all um, regarding the scriptures and standing fast and standing in victory um, because the Lord makes us victorious. Um, and I praise God for what the Lord is doing in our life. I look at um, Tamika. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm looking at Tamika and I'm looking at all the wonderful things that the Lord has done in her life. Um, you know, this is one of my sisters in Christ. Um, as a child, all the way through from school, all the schools we've been through. And it's just so beautiful to see her life and how God orchestrated her life. And she just walking in success and walking in just awesome things. And I, I love her family. And it's just really, really good because God is good. He's just really good. So I'm, I'm really proud of you, Tamiko. I'm proud of her business. She, she is a wife that cooks. And so I thank God for that. Thank God for her grandmother, Mother McClendon. And it's just a beautiful thing because all these treasures and everything that the Lord is blessing his people with, you know, we are that generation now. And we're walking into things that our grandmothers taught us, our mothers taught us. And so now we're the adults. <laughs> so it's really beautiful um, to have that. And um, it's just an amazing thing in the Lord. So we're just going to go ahead again, standing with the victory part four, and I'm going to pray. We're going to go into the scriptures because I just want to give you some tools um, for victory. And I'm talking about living a spiritual life, which also connects to your natural life, which also connects to everything else that's around you because whatever as a man thinketh in his heart so is he and so um we are encouraged to be in the word and attach be attached to the spirit of the lord and we must be born again so i'm talking to believers today um and also those who may not be believers and they're considering um just know that jesus is real he is the lord and savior he is he's not a created being he is god himself and so we praise god for for what he's doing and we praise God for who he is and this is the time for us to know that he rose for our victory if there was no resurrection we wouldn't have a gospel to preach so he had to rise he had to rise so just like the enemy when the enemy thinks that he's got you and defeated you God's gonna make sure that you rise you know sometimes you don't know the plans that are orchestrated by the Lord you don't know unless he reveals it to you where you have to go through certain things in certain time periods um, however the Lord when God is in your life he's gonna make sure that you have the victory I mean even if you're not because you know some of us were not saved right some of us were not didn't know the way of the Lord but God had mercy on us God is the one who is leading us and guiding us and he's just such a loving God so so he has mercy. So when you come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, even if you're not here and he's Yeshua HaMashiach, you come to him, you'll look back on your life and say, wow, he was with me way back then. Wow, he was with me way back then.
way back then. And so we're really happy about the things of the Lord and we're, um, we're just excited. So I'm just going to give you a quick teaching because again, this is a short teaching. I only do about 15 minutes on Thursday. So this is Thursday night night at five and I welcome you here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you and we praise you for your goodness, your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father, that you are the deliverer. We thank you, Father, for this season, this time that we remember the Passover, the unleavened bread, the first fruits, and entering into the Feast of Weeks. And so, Father God, we bless you. God, we praise you. We thank you that Jesus came in the volume of the book it was written of him, that he would do your will. And so, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. I speak victory over these people, Father, that are coming in. I speak their hearts that they would that the word of God will penetrate their hearts, be found on good ground, that they would be encouraged today to know God that you are still around even if people if you don't feel it you're still here if, if the people don't feel it, you're still here, but you are going into their hearts today. And so, Father God, you said your word is spirit and it is life. And so, Father, we thank you. We speak life over your people right now. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. All right. So we're looking at standing with the victory. Um, and when you have the victory, you are undefeated. You are unstoppable. Everything that you have is right before you and there's nothing that can nothing no one no thing can stop you at all whatsoever It is your success the success that comes with God. It is exuberating. It is a celebration You have defeated the opponent. All right And so this is why we look at Passover and the world likes to say Easter But you know that is a pagan a pagan mindset and so when we come into the mindset of the Lord, when you say Passover, oh, the devil remembers that. So <laughs> that's why he doesn't, he doesn't um, care about you saying Easter because that's part of his life. But when you say Passover, he didn't pass over. That means he destroyed all the enemies. It reminds him that he is a defeated foe. God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he is reminded when we say Passover that he is a defeated foe. And so the enemy is defeated. God is exalted. And that's why we have to remember to say pass over because when he when you see the blood he said when i see the blood because remember he was sending destroyers in the land destroyers because he was making that last plague be known the last plague he was setting forth and he was letting them know oh no i'm taking my people out of here you have a stubborn heart and god chose pharaoh because he knew he was going to be stubborn and so even with some of us um, God knows that there are some stubborn people in our lives that won't let us go. But listen, whom the son says free is free indeed. There are some situations that does not want to let us go. But whom the son says free is free indeed. There are times and, and tribulations and cycles that don't want to let us go. But whom the son says free is free indeed. And God is going to do a new thing in your life. And the cycle must stop and must end today. You have to decree that over your life that cycle ends today it ends out of my life today this is my season of victory because it is a season of passover he is destroying the enemies there are things that are happening and he rose which is the first fruits and now this is the feast of tabernacle so we are waiting on him waiting on him and in the 50th time the 50th day out of this which is june the 5th is when you have pentecost because in these days there's seven weeks Every Sabbath, seven times seven is 49. And then the next day, which would be that Sunday, which is not the Sabbath. It's the first day of the week. That is Pentecost. So right now we're gathering. Right now we're meeting with the Lord. Right now we're feasting on him. And we're, we're excited about what he can do in our lives and in the lives of other people. So this is why uh, I just want to already encourage you. I already want you to know that you have the victory thus far and God's not going to stop giving you the victory. You have the victory. You can do it. You can do it. He give you dominion and power. Um, he give you power to overcome enemies. He give you the power to overcome any kind of obstacle. He gives you that power and authority. And you know, one of the, one of the main things in our life is that many a times we just don't know how to affect the change. Change. Okay, 
We don't know quite often how to affect the change. The change is going to come with a different decision. It's going to come with a different way of thinking. If you always do the same thing that you've always done and you, you're never going to get the same results. But if you do something different, if you do God's way, his way, because a lot of times, you know, the way of a transgressor is hard and it is <laughs> the way of a transgressor is hard because you find yourself fighting against God, fighting against timing, fighting against situations he set up for you. You're fighting against it. But God said, this is what I need you to do. This is what I need you to go through. So you want to run away from it. But God is saying, I need you to walk through it. So with that being said, we're going to go to the book of Matthew um, chapter 14, because in this focus today, I want to give you some tools. Because in this focus, in this focus point today, it's about Jesus walking on the sea, walking on the sea. And you need to know that in the sea, remember, you have enemy forces in the marine kingdom. Let me, let me, let me tell you right quick. Enemy forces in the marine kingdoms. The Bible talks about every creature under the earth and in the sea. There are creatures in the sea. And so if you read the book of Job, you'll understand Leviathan was in the sea. Behemoth was on the land. So you have these strongholds that uh, were in operation. And these strongholds like to stir fear in your heart. And I don't want to go ahead of myself. So let me go, <laughs> let me go to uh, Matthew chapter 14. And I'm going to look at um, verse 24. I'm just backing it up a little bit because... If you don't know this word, and I don't know who I'm all speaking to, I might be speaking with some that are scholars and educators and theologians and so forth, but I also might be speaking to some that are just, you know, they're simple minded. They've never heard of this before. So I'm going to have to go back up just a little bit to explain this. All right. All right. And so Matthew 14, and let's look at verse uh, 20, 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, loose, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So the ship was in the midst of the sea, and it's tossed with waves because you have contrary winds. Thank you, Sister Jerry. And in the fourth watch... Of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. So we're talking about that fourth watch, the fourth watch. Now, this is a time to watch and pray to guard. This is a time where enemies are trying to get back to their their places because they've already done their damage between 12 and, and 3 o'clock. <laughs> but at the fourth watch, you can shut it down. Whatever they thought they accomplished, you can shut it down. At the fourth watch, this is also a watch that the enemies try to imprison you. This is where you get nightmares. This is where you get um, strange dreams, um, weird phone calls, anything that's abnormal because the enemy wants to capture you in a way that you'll be in prison and you wouldn't even know it. Okay. Because the Bible says, while, while men slept, It's a whole different teaching on the fourth watch. But um, anyway, it says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them. Now, remember, the disciples were already in the ship and they're in the middle of the sea now. And the, the winds are contrary. saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear see the enemy likes to throw fear at you at something that you don't understand 
Okay, the Lord is coming and he's walking to you, but because you see the trouble happening and then you start looking and you don't quite know what you are looking at. And the Lord is saying, I'm here, I'm here visiting you, I'm walking towards you, and you may not recognize them because of the winds are tossed. Because the enemy knew that 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 God was going to come visit, Jesus was coming to see about you, Jesus was going to come meet you at this time. But also at the same time, the winds are troubled because they know who's coming, okay? They know they're getting rebuked, so it's a dual fold purpose, okay? All right, verse... um. 26, and when the disciples saw him walking under the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried with, for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It, it, um, it is I, be not afraid. So I'm going to say that again. Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto, unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying of a truth, thou art the son of God. See, this is a time also of great worship, you know, unto the Lord where you will understand who he is in his nature. Okay. That's why I said he's not a created being. He is God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word was God. The word was already in session. He was the word and he became flesh and dwelt among us. And so God in his mercy and in his grace, he wants you to use this time because we talked about tools. I said, I was going to do this teaching talking about tools, the fourth watch of prayer. This is the time to take authority over things. This is the time that, um, in the daytime, start reading scriptures and ask the Lord to help you with the areas of faith. Because the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So it is I. The Lord is saying it's I. I'm coming to see about you. I'm coming to meet you. I'm coming to help you. I'm coming. But he says, and then Peter had the audacity to say, if it's you, bid me to come. Well, come on. So that means if Jesus walked on the water, right, he took authority over the sea. Then when he bids you to come, you will come. And don't think this is imaginary. That's one thing I need you to understand. Don't think this is imaginary. This actually happened. Okay? This actually happened. So the little body say this is a metaphor. So you can know that, you know, God gives you victory. No, 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 no. It, it, he does give you victory, but it's not a metaphor. This is something that actually happened. The Lord walked on the sea. It congealed. He didn't, he didn't drown. He walked straight on the sea. And another thing, when Moses, again, we talked about the Passover. When Moses was leaving out of Egypt, remember, the earth, the, the sea had to open up. And they were walking on the dry ground for them. Okay, so they were passing on over, coming out of Egypt. So this, in this season, I really need you to understand and know. That God has given you the victory. The enemies are behind you. They're, they're back there behind you. Your blessing is in front of you. It's in front of you. And so if it's in front of you, rise up and start giving God praise. Take advantage of the fourth watch of the night. Prepare yourself to begin to pray and praise and give God thanks. Because this is your portion that you spend time with the Lord. And yes, God is blessing you. He's blessing your family. He's doing it. And everybody has different levels that we are to go through, different levels, different places in the kingdom that God has assigned us to. So everybody may not be on the same path or on the same level or whatever it is that God has given you. 
So this is why one of the tools, never compare yourself with anybody else. Be grateful with what God has done in their life. I'm so grateful to, to my sister Tammy. You know, I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of all the things that God has blessed her hands to do. And I'm so proud of her family. I'm just so proud because I remember her and her husband from high school. So it is just so beautiful to see them this far out and see the grandchildren. I mean, it's just beautiful. And so you need to remember, never compare yourself. Never compare yourself. You don't know how your life has to be somebody else's life. But you give God the glory because you see his blessings upon their life. And so God is in control. And what I need you to remember is when you're standing with God, as Peter was walking with God, who is the victory, he showed you the victory, already won the victory over the sea. Okay. And so here was the trouble, but God walked you through it. So listen, don't go run and hide in this time. Don't run and hide. Go forward with God. Remember, if you never, if you always do the same thing that you've always done and you expect a different result, that is called insanity. But if you do things that are different as the Lord leads, you're going to see greater works than what you ever thought. You're going to see God in in such ways because remember it takes faith he said come so god is saying come i'm on this side i'm on the other side so just like the children of israel had to pass through that red sea they had a promise on the other side so no matter how afraid you may feel no matter how troubled you may think you are in your soul no matter how much you may have forgotten and your heart is heart of the other miracles that God have done. Remember, God is yet the same and there's victory ahead because victory is already with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you and we praise you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Father, I thank you that you bless the people of God. Give them favor in every area of their life because you're bringing them forward. You're taking them to a place that they've never been before. And so, Father God, I thank you for your strength. The strength of Israel be with them. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your encouragement. I thank you and I praise you, God, that you open up doors that no man can shut. And you shut doors that no man can open. Lord, you give opportunities that nobody can slam the door on. Lord, we are blessed and we are um, blessed and there's nothing impossible with you. We're walking with you. You've given us things to do. You've given us talents. You've given us gifts. And so, Father God, you want us to use these things. And as we use it, you expand it. So, Father God, I thank you for the businesses. I thank you for the witty inventions that you're going to give to the people. I thank you, Father God, for stretching out their finances. Father, I thank you, God, that you are the one that is giving them the ideas. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to show them how to put the pieces together. Because we know in part. You, we know in part. We know little by little. But when the fullness has come, we'll see the fullness of all things. And so, Father God, I thank you. This is a new adventure for many people. Right now in this time. And so, Father, let's see your hand of glory in this hour. Let's see your hand of miracles in this hour. Because, Lord, you're going to work mighty wonder miracles. And so, Father God, I thank you and I praise you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People of God, be blessed. I love you all. See you next week, Thursday night live at 5. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me.